Hi to y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ish, and welcome to The Vermander <laughs> Curse. Uh, this is a game by Z Technician. He has made games such as The Man from the Window, The Man from the Window 2. Uh, he, he's made a lot of games, but the ones I've played is Man from the Window, Man from the Window 2, and I think the Shadow Catcher, I think that's what it was called, or the Shadow Watcher. It's been a while. Um, now I've been meaning to play a lot of his games, but I've just been forgetting or busy with other games and other series. Uh, so I'm finally trying to catch up on them. Now I'm sure as you have noticed, I'm sure you've noticed, that there are already two stars. Uh, it's because I have already played this game. I go and I beat the game. And I look over at OBS. And I realized it's not recording. <laughs> so here I am to do it all again. Fun! Uh, so let's get started. And <laughs> time to read all the same dialogue again. Fun! Oh, wait. Okay, good. I gotta make sure, sure it's all good. You wanted to see me, Mr. Vimander, sir? Hannah, why aren't this month's profits as high as last month's? I've been looking over that piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't like all the numbers on it. I can't make heads or tails out of that dang thing. They raised the threshold on how much you need to donate in order to get your tax reduction, remember, sir? They did what? When was this? Sir, I've been r reminding you about this for the last eight months. But it's actually fine, though. You, you still end up saving way more money than if you didn't get their deduction, so... With the good lord as my witness, I am being swindled. I will not stand for this. No one gets over J.P. Vermander. No, sir. Not now, not ever. But, sir, now then, where have I been donating all my hard-earned money to? The hospital, sir? Hospital? Which one? There's only one in town, sir. The only hospital in this gosh-forsaken black backwater town. Almost said Blackwater. I'm like, what the? This ain't... This ain't Red Dead Redemption 2. The only hospital in this gosh forsaken backwater town, and they still have the nerve to swindle me out of my money. Hmm. Well, I know exactly how to handle this situation. Prepare for the ritual, Hannah, and go fetch me my robes. The ritual? But Mr. Vermander, sir, please. This is entirely uncalled for. The people in that hospital have done nothing to you, sir. Besides, the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about 1% less, sir. That's nice and all, Hannah, but I don't remember asking. Now go, we don't have time to waste. Notify me immediately when everything is ready. Okay, sir. You're a mouse. Hello? Hello? Anyone home? I hear ya, I hear ya. Give a gal a minute. And that is an anteater. Sorry, I'm trying to make all the same jokes I made last time, and it's not, it's just not hitting the same. Yeah? Ah, hello there, Dr. Ida, I presume? That's me. Who's asking? Fantastic! I'm Morton, the nurse whose transfer request you received. Transfer request? What in the world are you talking about? You aren't aware? Surely you've read the email concerning me. We don't get no regular internet out here, sonny boy. Only thing we get out here is that old satellite connection. And we ain't even got that neither. But if you're here to help, I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to learn, so you better pay attention, because I'm only saying this once. I'm all ears, doctor. When patients come in, I write, I write their information down on this clipboard. Wouldn't it be better to use the computer instead? No. The waiting room is over here. Ain't much to say about it. All the magazines are older than I am, and ain't none of them worth reading no more. Oh my. We got eight rooms. Three are occupied and the rest ain't. 
Mr. Langboyd is over in room 4A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tammy Gill's in room 7A. She needed one of them teeth pulled, and we ain't got many options for anesthetic. Oh gosh. So I gave her some of that old fashioned medicine I keep under the sink. I thought they just yanked out a tooth, old fashioned style. No, they, they gave her anesthetic of some sort. She'll be a little dizzy for a while, but everything else went smooth as silk. Impressive. There's a woman over in 582. Poor thing cut her hand up real bad on her job, then tried to hide it. Her, bo her boss found out and sent her here. I ain't managed to figure out her name, so I wrote her down as Jane Doe and patched her up. Ah, mystery. I wonder who she is. We ain't known to ask too many questions around here, Mr. Morton. We're here to help. Got it? Understood, Doctor. We've got two bathrooms, an operating room, and something like a kitchen. Oh, excellent. The lights in here don't work half the time. We keep our medicine supply in the OR, but most of the bottles are empty because budget ain't paying to refill them. There ain't nothing ever in the fridge, so don't even bother checking. Oh. Does anything in this hospital function as intended? Not really. And that's about it. Let's head back to the front desk so we can get you signed in and start your first shift. Oh jeez, what's wrong with his elbow? That old signing sheet is somewhere over here. I suggest you go ahead and start searching for it yourself, because I ain't about to come look for it. Understood, doctor. I'll find it. In the meanwhile, I better go make my rounds to check up on the patients. Come and get me if you need something. Um... Doctor, I mean no offense, but this work situation isn't very well set up. Haven't you ever considered better organization for such an important documents? I ain't getting paid to organize things, sonny boy. Besides, I know exactly where things are when I need them. Well, if it works for you, then I guess I'll just have to adapt. That's right. Um, I forgot what room they were all in. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. <laughs> Aha! For it. Everything alright in here? I'm fine, Doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I could walk out of here right now. <laughs> Ow! See, he can't even laugh without it hurting him. This is exactly why I said, Lang, baby, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We can pay someone else to clean the gutters. But did he listen? No. He waited till I left for work and then tried to get up on there himself. One little gust of wind and the next thing you know, bam, straight into the hedges. At least he had a soft landing, kind of. You know I could have done it if the wind hadn't picked up. Also, why are your eyes demons? It's not the point. You shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, can you please give this man something to fix his terminal lack of common sense, please? Sorry, honey, but we ain't got nothing to fix that. Now, you two try to m take it easy, all right? I'll be back later on. All right, what next? 5A. Let's do octopus. How you doing, dear? Okay. Hand is fine, no? You ain't got nothing to worry about, do you? Oh, Greek girl, back good as new. Good. Thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Try to get some rest, and I'll check back on you in later. I'll check back... I'll try to check back in on you later. I got, I got it. Yes, yes. Six, eight. Nope. Tammy! How you feeling, dear? Hey, Dr. Ida. What are you doing here? Still ain't sobered up yet, huh? Nope. That's fine, dear. At least that tooth ain't gonna bother you no more. Just give us some time and try to take and try to get some rest, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, that's everyone. I'd better get back to Mr. Morton. Oh, hi there, Doctor Ida. The phone started ringing while you were gone, so I answered it. And the caller won't stop going on about rituals and demons, among other things that I don't understand. 
I think that it may be best if you talk to her. There's always something. Honey, honey, slow down. Ain't none of this making sense. Please, you have to get out of there right now. My boss just summoned an actual, genuine demon, and now you're all in danger. Uh-huh. And who do you work for again? J.P. Vermander, madam. Who is that, doctor? He's some rich city boy who moved out here when he inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here have to pay him rent just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's him exactly. I don't know all the details, but there's a blood pact and a demon and a curse and all kinds of other stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes ten, you won't be able to leave. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't no way we're getting everyone out of here that fast. My goodness, I didn't expect the sex to be this high on my first night. But I'm committed at this point. Is there anything we could do to help the situation? I did go snooping into a few old journals kept by the Vermanders. Based on what I've read, if you can make it to sunrise, the demon will leave. But there's a bunch of rules you need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. For example, every hour until sunrise, the demon will enter the place it was summoned to. It will travel down the nearest hallway in search of blood, specifically your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you, so keep those closed. What room are you both in right now? The reception area. You need to keep that in mind, all right? When the demon arrives, you make sure you're all in the same room when the ritual started. If someone isn't, the demon will know it. And once it knows where someone is, closing the doors won't stop it. If you're ready, I can tell you what to expect when 10 o'clock hits. I ain't about to let no demon run roughshod over my house of healing. Just tell us what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's going to happen first. The demon places a lot of emphasis on windows for some reason, right? It will try to use its powers to open up windows around itself. You're going to need, and I cannot stress this enough, you're going to need to close any and all windows before the hour is up. Leave one open and the demon gets stronger, and you don't want that, alright? Once you finish everything you need to do before the hour is up, try staring at a clock. I'm sure it'll help the time pass a little faster. I'll stay on the line in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck, and please be careful. Yeah, I'm sure y'all notice I am ad-libbing some of this because I'm, I'm switching up words. It's fine, y'all get the message. You. Doctor, are things usually this hectic around here? Not really. We usually ain't got no more than one or two patients in here at once. But we got three in here tonight. That's not really what I meant. Check everything. Gotta check everything. Everything good. I'ma just close that window for ya. I know. The kids lane. Did you even think about them? Their little heads are probably worried sick by now. I know. I owe them an apology for making them worry. And I owe you one too. You two all right in here? Yeah, we're fine. Uh-huh. Well, holler if you need something now. All right. Y'all are fine. Five eight. I tired on work. Sleep for a minute, then hand caught. You fell asleep at work and that's how your hand got like that? Yes. Oh, you poor thing. Well, at least try to get some rest while you're here, all right? Tammy! Tammy sits happily, humming to herself. <laughs> That's fine. Less work for me. I thought I didn't close the door for a second. Uh, no, it's fine. No, no cl close, 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 cl close. The wall, fine. Run! Can we talk about my first playthrough? I kept getting smacked by that dang door. The time was 11 p.m. 
All the windows have been closed. And then it arrived. Ah, uh, my throat. Tea helps everything. Here's what's going to happen next. You'd be surprised how much the demon's powers resonate with electronics. It can gain access into the phone lines and try to gain power too. Oh. Like last time it was the windows and then the, I think it was the TV and then the phones. So it switches up. Okay. If you notice the phone continuously ringing, then that's exactly what it's trying to do, alright? Now, this is going to sound crazy, but you need to pick up the phone and listen. Pay attention, because this part is important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you gotta recite this mantra. Your presence is not welcome here. You must depart immediately. And you have to say it in that voice. Very important. It won't work otherwise. Don't worry, you remember it when the time comes. But if there's silence on the other end of the phone, then keep quiet. Silence means it hasn't properly figured out the phone's location yet. And you don't want to give it any clues, alright? Doctor, you look tired. That's because I am. Then let me handle things this hour. You should rest. Doctor, why is this hospital in the state that it's in? And what do you mean by that? Well, there's hardly any supplies here and you seem to be understaffed. Plus, we're lacking a lot of modern equipment. Mr. Morton, where you are, a small hospital in an even smaller town. We ain't got much to work with here. We take what we have and we make it work. I see. Okay. So, windows and phones. Not cut close. Everything good. You listen closely. You can hear shallow breathing from the other side of the phone. Be gone, tall demon! You can sense the presence on the other end of the phone that's departed. Okay, good. Hello! I think my back's beginning to start hurting again. I guess that medicine I had earlier wore off or something. The job lane. Now you're probably going to have to miss work. Who knows what, how they react. Heck, now I'm missing work. I know. We'll be fine. Watch, come morning I'm gonna walk out of here good as new. I hope so. Okay, so you need drugs. Oh, I'm gonna just close that window for you. How you feeling, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Excellent. That's exactly what we want to hear. <laughs> Especially right now, because there's a demon after us all. Nothing. Uh, missing woman. <laughs> Holy f- I wasn't expecting her to be in here. Hey, why is it so dark in here? I'm actually not certain, ma'am. But strange things are happening tonight, and I need you to get back to your room, please. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. <laughs> that just scared me. <laughs> she, I haven't seen her in that room before. <laughs> uh, nothing. Any drugs? Pick up beds. Ah! Oh! What was it, 4A? Yeah. Here's your medicine. Sir, I brought you your scheduled pain medication. Just in time, my back was starting to act up again. Whew. Wonderful, wonderful. Like 110% sure that she's in here. Yeah, okay. Wee! Wow! Right. The time was 12 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the phones have been answered correctly. And then it arrived. And more tea to soothe my throat for doing all these voices.
Here's what's going to happen this time. The demon will try to draw power from any lights it can access to, right? You know it's inside a room trying to siphon power when the lights start flickering. When it happens, all you need to do is enter the room, close the door, and shut your eyes for a few seconds. You're really going to need to use the space inside your mind to focus, and to focus for this to work. You'll know it's worked when the light stops flickering. And make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, then... I ain't as tired anymore. You can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, Doctor. You take this out, and I'll take the next. Any words of wisdom? Doctor? Yeah? You must be extremely talented to somehow manage this entire hospital by yourself. Thank you, Cinnabor. How do you do it? What do you mean, how? Ain't nobody else gonna do it, so I got to. I'm the only doctor this town has had for the last 46 years, honey. At this point, they need me just as much as I need them. Amazing. Right. Back to work. No, cl close, close, close. You listen closely. You don't hear anything on the other side of the phone. Say nothing. You can sense the prince on the other end of the phone has departed. Nice. All right, everything in this room is good. No! Let, let me out! Free him! Uh, fine. 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 Hi, y'all. Just promise me you won't go doing something this reckless again, alright? As of tonight, I'm officially staying far, far away from the roof. And ladders, too. Unless we can save some extra money if I- LAY! <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't look at me like that. Oh, she looking. She gonna smack you, too. She just can't do it right now because y'all in public. <laughs> Bye, babe. How you feeling? Here. Best rest in a long time. Alright, so you're fine. Nothing. No, no, open. Need to close that window. How are you? <gasps> it's noon already? It's midnight, darling. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she's just still spaced out, but she's fine. Oh, no, no, no. We don't like open windows here. You're fine. You're fine. Back to the room. Ah! Smack in the face. You're to blame. Darling, you give love a bad name. It was 1 a.m. All the windows have been closed. None of the lights have been left flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. And then it arrived. Here's what's going to happen next. There's something about the demon's power that resonates with TV signals, right? It will turn on any TV it can manage to gain access to. They never show anything besides static once it takes control, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn the TV off. That'll kick it out for a while. But don't leave any TVs that it's controlling on, alright? It won't end well. Alright. Yes? So what about you, sunny boy? Hmm? There's a lot of other places you could transfer to. Yet, and I ain't yet figured out why you picked this one. I thought it would be the best decision for my daughter and I in the long run. A nice quiet town in the countryside sounded ideal for us. Of course, it wasn't as quiet as I thought it would be, but it's still nice. Well, Mr. Morton, if we make it out of this, I'm throwing you both a, a nice little welcome to town party. Now that'd be just lovely, Doctor. Nothing. Oh wait, I forgot. I need to check the TV. Okay, yeah. 
And then go. And then no. And then. Jasmine? What? Thanks for staying here with me. I'm sorry to put you through all this. I'm just glad you're okay. We can deal with everything else later on. Hurting is again. Anything do, please? Oh god. Yeah, I heard the phone ring. Is it from y'all's ring? Yeah. You s listen closely. You can hear shallow breathing from the other side of the phone. Be baptized, brother, and be gone with you, foul demon! You can sense that the presence on the other side of the phone has been departed. <laughs> No. Did I go sit, did I turn off the TV in here? Ah! Yeah. Eh, I'm missing patient. Lovely. Oh, I forgot to check this. No. Are you in here again trying to jump scare me? Oh. Is this where y'all keep the shredded cheese? I was told there's nothing in the refrigerator, so probably not. For now, though, I need you to get back to your room, please. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. Thank you. Okay. Now I need some drugs. Nope. Madam, I brought you your scheduled pain medication. Yes, good. Time was 2 a.m. All the windows have been closed, all the televisions have been turned off, none of the lights have been left flickering, all the phones have been answered correctly, and then it arrived. Half was a half of a half of a half. Can you stop sniffing the wall? It's weird. There's one final thing this demon is going to try. Ritualistic candles. It has the power to manifest them inside an area of influence. It's vital and very, very important that if you see one of these, you extinguish it. If you let it keep burning, the demon will be able to draw power from it. It won't try anything new after it gets to this part, so you don't have to worry about any more rules. Oh, and I almost forgot. This part is important too. Whatever you do, make sure you do not... Great sign. No, open the door. Oh, it's in the next room. If you listen closely, you can hear faint whispering. Be gone! Get gone! Nothing good in here. Oh, hi there. Okay. Oh. Nothing in here. Here. I swear, did he open every motherfucking window? She's summoning demons! I knew there was something off about her! Then here, the window, to the window, to the wall! 
And I can't finish the song because YouTube will get mad. Uh, did I check this bathroom? Yeah. I check this one. Yep. Yeah. I check that. Yep. Everything good. The time was 3 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the televisions have been turned off. None of the lights have been left flickering. And then it arrived. I feel like I'm starting to sing an Eminem song. Uh, someone let me do use some Eminem. Listen closely, you can hear shallow breathing. It's gone. Oh jeez, I'm terrifying in the mirror. <laughs> TV for y'all. I know y'all want to watch Golden Girls, but you can't tonight. Time was 4 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the televisions have been turned off. Ba 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 ba. And then it arrived. He here he goes huffing the paint on the wall. You listen closely, you don't hear anything. Say nothing. You sense the presence that left. I'm sorry, I'll have to close that window for you. Still flickering. Can't tell. Oh, I forgot to check this one. Oh, I think good. No, thank you. Time to get back. Run, run, run. There's a demon all loose. Okay. The time was 5 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the televisions have been turned off. None of the lights have been left flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. All the candles have been extinguished. The sun began to rise upon our little town. And the demon could not stay in this world much longer. However, in direct violation of the Vermander Pact, no blood had been spilled that night. The most important part of the pact had not been fulfilled, which meant that the agreement was now null and void. 
After generations of being enslaved to the Vermander family, the demon was finally free. And though it did not have much time left, it knew exactly how it wished to spend its final moments. Oh. Tip top now by the love tree. Hannah, what in the world are you doing back here this early? Hannah? Hola! <laughs> oh, it's you. Don't you have some work to be doing? What do you want? Why are you looking at me like that? Don't, don't you go forgetting that you work for me, mister. I command you to get out of here. Why won't you listen to me, you stupid? Yummy, yummy, in the tummy. The angry house of the demon echoed throughout the town that morning. And then the estate fell deathly quiet. As it turned out, Hannah hadn't left the Vermander estate that previous night. She had been far too tired to return home after feeding instructions through the phone all night. Instead, she fell asleep in one of the manor's empty rooms. She was awakened by the awful noises emitting from upstairs. Hannah climbed the stairs and quickly made her way over to the office. Inside there lie J.P. Vermander, beaten, unmoving, and absolutely mangled. But against all odds, he was still alive. Hannah had a choice to make. A large part of her wanted to simply leave him there to give him the same disrespect and disregard that he showed others. She turned to leave, but deep down she knew that this wasn't the right thing to do. As bad as he was, she would not stoop to his level. So instead, she called for help. An ironic turn of events, J.P. Vermander's life was saved at the very same hospital he had tried to rid himself of. Despite their rightful and justified anger at the man, Dr. Ida and Nurse Morton treated him no dis different than any other patient except with a few more smacks upside the head. And he was soon on the road to full recovery. During his stay at the hospital, he was given a room near the front. Day after day, he watched the patients as they came and went. He watched as the hospital's only doctor and sole nurse did their best to help every person that arrived. And as he watched, he realized something. Those confusing numbers on that little piece of paper actually meant something. Those numbers represented actual people with lives and emotions. People that just wanted to get the help they deserved. It took a near-death experience at the hands of an angry demon and an intense stay at, in the hospital. But JP finally felt something that no Vermander had felt in a very long time. Remorse. He had vowed that he would do everything in his power to try to make amends. However, due to the pack being broken, most of the wealth and power it granted was soon lost to crippling debt. With no other options, JP sold off his estates and assets to pay his dues. And the last remaining bit of his fortune was donated to the hospital. As a sign of goodwill, Dr. Ida let him stay in one of their vacant rooms until he could get back on his feet. He's currently working as a food delivery driver to make ends meet, as he wasn't qualified for anything else. Though he does miss his money and his old lifestyle, in the end, he's just thankful to be alive. Morton settled into his new job as nurse just fine. Despite the rough first night, he grew to love the strange new town and its people. In the end, he knew that the decision to move here was the best for both him and his daughter. Ida is still the best and only doctor in town. She plans to use the donation money to renovate the hospital so that they can provide the best care possible for years and years ahead. And now that they had an actual budget, she decided to hire an accountant. Hannah happily accepted the position as her old job was no longer available. She's just glad, she's glad to finally have a boss that appreciates her hard work. And though it took a while, she did eventually forgive Fernanda for all of his misdeeds. 
The hospital had a bright future ahead of it, and everyone was on good terms. And that's all that mattered. Well, that was the Vermander Curse. It was a great, good game, great game. It's not super scary. Uh, like, there's a few little, like, you know, minor jump scares, but uh, it's better the story I liked and the mechanics and all that. Um, there are a few bad endings, like there's multiple, like a couple of different variations of it. But I'm not gonna be doing that because, well, one, a lot of people have already got gotten all the endings on YouTube. But also, I've already played this once, and then I had to play it again because apparently don't know how to record. <laughs> and I don't want, I don't want to, don't want to do it again. This is like an hour long game, and I don't want to do it again. <laughs> don't want to have to like spend like five hours here. Um. But yeah, great game. Go check out his other games on Itch.io. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.